All right, everyone, I wanted to talk about Beto O'Rourke and a sign of things to come with some of the, the younger side Gen X politicians and even maybe some of the older millennials at this point, you know, people in their, I think, what's the cutoff, 37 or 38, some you know, people that are approaching Beto. I think Beto's in his mid-40s. He's more like a Julian Castro-aged candidate or Gillibrand uh, or a Gabbard or something. Um, he's a sign of what's to come for our political system over the coming years. See, in the past, like in, in Boomer era, a person running for politics, they hadn't had any time to do like crazy shit on the internet uh, or, or in that more public square of that era. It really begins sort of in the mid 90s. Um, you get more of the, the mainstreaming of tabloid culture, which had been considered sort of dirty and lowbrow and was usually kept in the closet as a sort of national joke. Uh, it sort of becomes mainstream with Survivor, uh, with the MTV generation, shock jocks and stuff like that. Uh, and so what's happened is that you're getting a crop of politicians who maybe were so blitzed at the time they don't even remember all the weird shit that they did. And so they've said weird shit, they've done weird shit, and Beto's showing us in one sense how they're going to have to deal with this. If you hide it, if you hush it up and say, well, no, no, I didn't, I didn't go to that college orgy, I didn't say this thing that now is politically incorrect, if you do that, you'd, you'd lose. What he's doing is owning up to it. I actually admire that. I mean, I would never vote for the dude. I think he's cringy and crazy, but uh, I, I do admire that one thing about him. He's like forthcoming. Yeah, I ate like magic miracle dirt and shit after I lost to Ted Cruz. Maybe not the sort of person you want as a president, but it's an interesting story, and at least he's willing to be uh, forthcoming. It's better to hear it from him himself in like a magazine. He's like, oh yeah, I ate this handful of... of desert sand after I lost her. It was really sad and, you know, just I was weeping on the ground and I was like, ooh, this dirt looks tasty. I think I'll, ch I'll try a bit of it. Uh, and then apparently brought some back for his family to eat and it's like, that's a little bit weird. It's like, hey kids, eat up. It's a part of a, a, a balanced diet. It's part of a balanced breakfast to break your teeth on these sand particles, kids. Turns it won't come back to haunt you after you scarify your teeth and have 20 cavities. Uh, maybe not the, the best parenting. He actually came out as well and said, well, uh, I'm, I'm not, you know, the best parent, like I'm saying sort of an absentee father and stuff. And this after he had made a big show about not running for president and saying, well, it would tear my family apart, be bad for... He's not going to win. Uh, <laughs> this, he's clearly past the point of no return with some of his comments. Um, and the skateboarding cringe and weird shit like that. And uh, the way he speaks, like Trump has pointed this out. This was, as Scott Adams would say, the linguistic kill shot, saying that he waves his hands around a lot when he speaks. I immediately noticed that before Trump had said, the reason why is it, it reminded me exactly of a televangelist. His rally down in, in along the border looked more like a televangelist talking to a flock than it did a politician attempting to address a serious political issue. It's cult of personality stuff, and it can work sometimes, and it works on some people, but if Beto, Beto's not on, I think it was because he was in a punk band, so he's used to doing like the grandstanding thing and you know, contorting himself, being edgy and shit. Uh, and that's the other thing about Gen X. Like, you're not exactly listening to Bing Crosby at that point. Um, and so people who have pictures of them wearing Gigi Allen shirts are going to be entering public life and trying to get into office. It's going to be pretty funny. Yeah, we got another 20, 30 years of really, really weird politics to look forward to, and that's that's at a minimum. We haven't even begun to see Gen Z politicians. can't even imagine what they'll be like. Probably a little more sane than Gen X or the Millennials. Now, as far as like fellow millennials, I, I identify least with my own generation. I identify so much more with people that are you know, 10, 15 years older or 10, 15 years younger, politically speaking. Uh, it's like most people in this particular age bracket, unless they're subscribed to my channel, are like they have pink hair and weird shit like that, keep talking about what offends them. I'm not interested in that. I'd much rather I, I'd much rather listen to stuff from like the Gen X period. You know, it's offensive, and that's the whole point. That's why it was funny. Uh, or some of the new shit that comes out. Music, same thing, millennials, shitty music, generally speaking. Um, the pop idols, the, 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 the tween culture, especially fucking Jonas Brothers. Uh, yeah, bullshit like that is just so terrible. It's like so corporatized and empty and hollow and unfulfilling in every possible way. It's not even offensive and cool. And Beto O'Rourke, he tries to be a little bit on the edgy side, I think. I think the reason why he talks about magical dirt and punk bands and, oh, I was part of the dead cow hack, I think it's called hackers and stuff. Uh, he's trying to impress people and be like, hey, I'm one of you kids. I don't think it quite works. Um, it, it comes off a little bit more like maybe Hillary Clinton saying Pokemon go to the polls 
and breaking down into like slang terms sometimes when faced with a younger audience. You know, it looks like Feinstein addressing those kids during that obvious hit moment when they were trying to uh, uh, make her say stupid shit and she took the bait and then they edited the footage. That was funny. They wanted to impeach Feinstein. Now they're mad at Gillibrand. She announces her campaign file. I'm not even going to bother talking about her because she's irrelevant, but uh, immediately she gets dogpiled by all of Al Franken's fans and all the partisan Democrats hate her, which is another reason she won't win. Their best chance to, to get a nominee and go up against Trump can't win the election, so uh, it's going to be a difficult time. It'd be really funny if they did end up with Beto. I wonder if Trump would bring up his dirt eating on debate stage and say, well, do you really want a president who's so superstitious he thinks if he puts a few pebbles in his mouth... It makes things divine and spiritual and magically better in his life. I think that would be a fairly, uh, yeah, and then all you have to do is say, well, do you want him to, to have the little red button? I haven't pressed it, but this dude, he might drop one of his magic rocks on it or something. Then he can go off on him uh, for these weird things and talk about punk rock. Say, well, no, I, I prefer Frank Sinatra, punk rock, ha, 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 punk is dead. That'd be funny. It'd be funny to see Trump get a debate question, what's your favorite punk fan, punk band or something? And he'd probably say some basic bitch thing like the Ramones. <laughs> In all honesty with Trump. It'd definitely be something from the 80s. Uh, then he comes out and he's, he's like, again, it's like Gigi Allen or something. And, you know, and, uh, so some band names that I can't even say. I was going to say a different band. AXCX comes to mind. I know not, not punk, but, you know, kind of crust punk at times, though. A little bit. Kind of, sort of. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a funny election. It's going to be pretty great. That's about all. Peace out.